Okay, we're back. And so, what I've done here is I've totally given in to using my local version of Firefox because I want to have it side by side with Visual Studio so I can reference the opcodes here on the left hand side as I type them in on the right hand side into my code. And so I'm just going to avoid the URL bar up at the top so I don't accidentally uh, have something autocomplete that I don't want to. Okay, so let's see, what's the best thing to do here? I think the best thing is to just start going for it. I mean, I can already read in the opcodes. I might as well just start implementing them. It sounds like fun. And uh, what could go wrong? So let's see, we're gonna build a chip eight CPU and I'm gonna put this in the same source file here just so that I'm working from one place and then we'll clean it up as we go. And so I need a CPU, I guess. Uh, so I'll call this my CPU, that sounds okay. And my CPU's got a bunch of memory, it's got a bunch of registers, it's got the stack. So let's start putting those in there. Uh, I've got some sort of, I'm just gonna make them public for now and then I'll probably renege on that a bit later. Uh, so this is my, what would we call this? Uh, I'm gonna just call it my RAM. And this is going to be 4096 entries in that array because I've got four kilobytes of memory. Uh, I'm also going to have all of my registers and I've got 16 of those, right? So registers and I'll have 16 of those. And then I also have an address register, which is 16 bits. And so I'll call that address. Uh, I'll actually call it I because that's what they have here. And then we've got a stack and this allows us to have up to 24 levels of nesting. Each of those levels requires a 16 bit return address. And so that's a total of 48 bytes. And so I can make an array here and I'll just call this my stack. And it's a new short that's got 24 of these entries. Okay, this is looking reasonable. I've got some timers. Sure, we'll just go for that. Um, let's see where these timers are actually used. Timer sets VX to the value of the delay timer. Okay, so it looks like these timers must be 8-bit values because I'm able to I'm able to set them to VX. So VX is an 8-bit register, uh, or sorry, 8-bit register. So we'll go with that. So I've got a public byte, which is my first timer, which is my delay timer. And then I've got another byte, which is my sound timer. And then I'll have these decrement at a rate of 60 times uh, per second, eventually. Uh, the input is done with the hex keyboard. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll just have a public byte uh, keyboard. The byte is overkill because I can really store 256 values, but we'll just use the, uh, the lower four bits so that we get 16 keys. Uh, graphics and sound, uh, we're gonna be drawing to some sort of display, which is 64 by 32. Uh, it's monochrome, but how, how should I do this? I could have an array of booleans, for example, but that'd be a really inefficient way to do it because every boolean is actually mapped to an 8-bit byte. Uh, so in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of punt on this and go with the simple approach, and I'll have a display that's just a bunch of bytes, and it's going to be 64 by 32 entries. So that will be one byte per pixel, but really they're only ever gonna be one or zero. I could make it 255 and zero, uh, whatever we like. And now we just have to start to implement our opcodes. So let's see here, 35 opcodes, all two bytes long. They're sort of beginning, here they are. Zero and then calls an RC1802 program. That's another chip, not necessary for most ROMs. We're gonna skip that one. We'll check that off and say we're 1 35th of the way to done. Okay, so we're going to have a way to execute an opcode or instruction, whatever we wanna call it. And we'll pass in an opcode and then we'll just have a monster switch statement here because that seems like a pretty easy way to do it. Um, let's see here. So if it's zero, 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 I'm just trying to make sure this switch is going to make sense in the long run. It looks like it won't because I'm going to want to mask out the first four bits 
to actually help me out here. Yeah, so what I'm looking at here is I'm trying to look at how I can group these opcodes together and what they've done here in their documentation. And it looks like things are grouped based on the first four bits. You can see zero, that first four bits is well-defined. Uh, zero here, first four bits again, well-defined. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So I think my first step should really be to take those first four bits and then call some different switch statements based on that. And so that's what my approach is going to be. I don't know what I'm gonna call that first four bits. Uh, I'm just gonna call it a nibble because that sounds cool. And uh, so I'm gonna say that my nibble is equal to that opcode that came in and with OX, and then I need to get this right. It's F minus seven because it's the top four bits. Can I do this? Oh, you can't have binary binary those? That would have been so cool. Can I, oh, maybe I can. Nope, does not know how to do that. Or is it, I think it's because this and is converting to an and. I can totally have binary literals. That is super cool. I think that's a new thing. I've never seen that done before. Uh, so I need to add one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Did I do that right? Nine, 10, 10, 11, need one more, 12. That was me just being totally lazy because I didn't want to do the hex in my head. I shouldn't do that. Let's fix this. Um, we're gonna go in here. And <laughs> let's just pretend that didn't just happen. Let's pretend I knew what that was off the top of my head because I totally didn't know what that was. I was thinking that that was eight bits for some reason. I don't know why. Perfect. We've got it. We've got the top nibble. This looks a lot better. We've also learned we can do binary lib literals. We're doing great. Brand new C-sharp. Good stuff. Okay. So now we're going to switch based on the nibble. And uh, if it's zero, then we can either clear the screen or return from a subroutine. Okay. I think my I is basically my program counter. And so now we're going to say case zero. Let's write out the whole thing. Okay. So case OX 0000, zero, zero, zero. that means we're one of these three here. We're going to totally ignore that first one. And instead, we're going to just implement these two. So if opcode is equal to ox 0 e 0 we clear the display, which means that we set all of these values to zero. Uh, we could just say that this is display is equal to a new byte, but let's actually just clear it. So we're in type of zero, we're going to iterate over this full display, and we're going to set each of those values to zero. That opcode is done. Else if the opcode is equal to ox 0 ee Now we're going to return from a subroutine. And returning from a subroutine, I'm going to implement it the way I think it should be implemented, and then we might have to correct this in the future. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to say i is equal to some value from the stack. We're going to pop the value off the stack, and then just continue execution from there. To make this easier to do, I'm actually going to make this a stack of U shorts. And then what I can do is I can say i is equal to stack.pop, and that will just take care of all this for me. Lastly, we should probably catch any opcodes that we can't handle, and so if we do hit this point here, that means that they've probably tried to execute this call RC1802 program, which we don't support. And so we're going to throw a new exception, uh, unsupported opcode. And uh, let's take advantage of this string stuff here and we'll uh, write out the opcode. Just like that. And then, break. I think we've taken care of those first few. And, you know, do I, yeah, I will throw a new exception. Okay, 
So now up here, let's just start testing this out to see how it goes. Instead of printing the opcode to the, sh to the screen, I'm actually going to try to execute that opcode in my CPU. And so to do that, I'll need to create a new CPU. And then what I'll do is I'll call CPU.execute opcode and I'll toss it that opcode that I read in here. And now this execute opcode has a good chance of throwing exceptions, especially since I'm now gonna put this down here at the bottom. Uh, throw unsupported opcode. So what we wanna do for now is wrap this in a try and catch. And then what I'll do here is I'll just write to the console the message from E and we'll see what happens. All right, so we got a lot of unsupported opcodes, but you'll remember that the program actually started with clearing the screen. The first opcode was 00E0, and because we didn't get an unsupported opcode for 00E0, it looks like we executed that just fine. And so I'd say we're off to a, a decent start, um, making some assumptions right now, but I think everything's working as expected. So we'll continue along shortly.